Sergio, first of all, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure to receive you. To start our conversation, please uh, talk a little bit about Ilian uh, Renewable Energy. It's a new company. Uh, we were talking before the interview, mm -hmm. four years of existence. Uh, how are you uh, at this moment? Ilian, indeed, is a, uh, a young company. It's a Brazilian company, which belongs to uh, Grupo Electra, which is a uh, energy operating and investment group based out of Curitiba in the state of Paraná in Brazil. It's been around for nearly 25 years and owns one of the largest energy traders in Brazil, has over 20 uh, small hydro plants in operation. Uh, we also own one of Brazil's largest, I think it is the largest pellet factory, uh, which is a renewable fuel uh, for export and also for local consumption. And four years ago, we created Ilian Energias Renovaveis, which is a renewable energy company focused on large-scale, uh, utility-scale, solar and uh, wind uh, farms. Perfect. Uh, considering the current uh, economic environment mm -hmm. and the volatility mm -hmm. of exchange rates in emerging markets, mm -hmm. how does Ilian uh, yeah. manage this risk, uh, especially when financing large-scale projects? That's a key question. Uh, if you invest in Brazil, you will have to bring your foreign currency, whatever it is, US dollars or Canadian dollars or Indian rupees, you're going to have to import and bring that currency into the country. And once you bring it into the country, you are stuck to that exchange rate at which you did your conversion. So the, by the time you leave, you exit. If you, if you are a long-term investor, or even if you are not a long-term investor, but eventually you will leave. Eventually you will collect dividends. And if the, the exchange rate depreciates, then the return on that original invested capital will go down. So understanding this risk and understanding ways to mitigate this risk are key for the success. So one way we have uh, looked at the key risk of currency and to make ourselves attractive uh, to foreign investors is to have part of our future cash flows denominated in US dollars. That gives foreign investors a perspective of uh, risk mitigation. However, if you, for the other half of our portfolio, which is contracted in uh, Brazilian reais, uh, you have to remember that uh, the PPAs in Brazil are indexed to the local inflation. Over the long run, uh, over the long run, the local inflation indexation helps alleviate a bit the foreign exchange risk to the extent that you have a price adjustment by the local inflation yearly. Uh, but that does, it doesn't give you a complete uh, mitigation of the risk, but a partial. A potential uh, mitigation or uh, an additional, an, an additional allevia uh, alleviation of this risk would be for you to defer bringing your foreign currency into the country if you are a foreign investor. What you could do is you could borrow locally, equity financing locally, and by the time you reach COD of your project, whatever that project may be, then you can bring equity and pay out that loan. Another thing you might like to contemplate is to incorporate in your economic model a creeping devaluation of the real in relation to the US dollar such that you are not caught off guard. Perfect, perfect. Sure. Uh, while the generation is a key focus, yeah. there are other challenges such as uh, the storage, uh, the grid, uh, stability, infrastructure, mm -hmm. modernization. Mm -hmm. uh, so how are the biggest mm -hmm. challenges and how does Ilian address these challenges? Um, looking at Brazil's grid as a whole, um, I will draw a parallel uh, with other countries which have a significant component of renewable and, uh, generation in its matrix. Uh, uh, the US, particularly California, Australia, the Iberian Peninsula, 
um, have a significant component of renewable energy in their energy matrices. What happens is when you have a lot of solar particularly, um, and also to some extent uh, wind, you have abundant energy, but you don't have sufficient power capacity, firm capacity, which is system inertia, which, is, which means when you have uh, swings between demand and supply, if you don't have enough inertia in your system, you will have problem with grid instability. So uh, what we see in Brazil then, as the sun goes down, you have a, a, an increased demand and then a surge in price. Prices go up and they start to go up from about 5 p.m. and they stay up all the way until about 10, 11 p.m. and then they, they taper off a little bit and they go to the, to the beginning of the day and then they start going up and then they go down again and they stay very flat during the, the, the peak sun hours, and then they go up again. That uh, uh, is a problem which afflicts all, all, all energy matrices with a large component of uh, renewable energy. So what do we need? We need more thermal, and we need batteries. We need strategically located batteries into the system. The batteries can be charged during the day when prices dip, when prices go down, you can actually charge the batteries and release that stored energy uh, from 5 o'clock, yeah. from 6 p.m. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to inject thermal energy. The more solar energy or capacity you, you, you add to a system, the more firm power you will need to bring to that system and that today in Brazil is thermal generation. But hopefully, we're going to see more and more batteries being installed, large-scale batteries being installed in the country, which is the case now that we see here in Chile, in Australia, in, uh, in, in Europe as well. Our, our grid is becoming unstable. We run the risk of having potentially brownouts uh, if we don't have enough water storage capacity or if we don't have the brownouts then we're going to have ever larger price swings and price swings we call it the modulation price risk that makes uh, financing of new projects very uh, expensive because banks can't really have a feeling for how much risk how to measure that price risk and uh, that's the key challenge that we have today. Yeah, and, and taking your answer mm -hmm. as a hook, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to talk a little bit about the curtailments. Curtailment, yeah. yeah. The uh, curtailment is when you have uh, surcharges in a, in, a, in a grid or in a segment of that grid. Curtailments today uh, plague, uh, particularly the northeast of the country, and particularly uh, along in regions along the coast of Rio Grande do Norte and Sierra states, we have some substations and some uh, trunk lines which are very overloaded, and that reverberates down the system. So the curtailment is uh, is 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 a problem of system planning, in my view. Uh, if we had more transmission capacity from those regions to other, other consuming centers of the country, like in the southeast and in the north, we would have much less curtailment. Uh, however, we have bottlenecks. We have transmission and we have substation bottlenecks, which have been recognized. There are auctions uh, which have taken place, and there will be more and more auctions for new uh, trunk lines and local regional lines to alleviate that problem and be able to irrigate energy from where it's being generated in high volumes and not being consumed to other areas which need that energy, particularly the southeast. Now talking about the uh, next auctions in Brazil yes. regarding renewable energy, Yes. how interested uh, are you in, in these projects? Uh, we are very interested in participating in new auctions, uh, whether auctions for uh, renewable energy or for batteries. 
we would be very keen to participate. Um, so we are following uh, every step of the way, every new development, every new announcement uh, made by the Ministry of uh, Mines and Energy. So we look forward to these auctions as well. Is there any specific region or project that you can comment about? We, we, uh, we, we like very much the northeastern region, which is a region that's growing. Uh, that's where most of our projects are located. That's, where, that's a region which is rich in new projects as well. Nice. And to finish the interview, mm -hmm. sure. can you give us a short testimonial, like 30 seconds? What value do you see? participating at your uh, club and these events specifically, why do you participate? Excellent. Well, it's a, it's a forum for networking above all. Uh, I value uh, every GRI event uh, and I tend to attend, I, my, my, my tendency is always to attend personally. When I can't, then someone from my team attends and uh, I think it's an uh, invaluable opportunity for networking and, and, for, and for exchanging ideas as well, getting new ideas and perhaps even establishing new partnerships. Sure, amazing, okay. Treasure. Thank you for the interview. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.